So let's take a look at our link list again. So here's our head pointer, and our head is pointing to our first node. And remember that our nodes have two different things in them. They have a data and a next. Head points to the first node. First node A points to the second node, also has data and next. Points to B. B points to our third node, also has data and next. C and C points to null. Okay, we only have three nodes. So what we're trying to do here is to remove the first node, node A, from our list. So what we want to do is we want to remove the pointer that points to that node, and we want to return the entity that's stored in data, whatever that is, okay? So how are we going to just delete that node? How are we going to remove it? What are we going to do? So head is pointing to the node, and so we need to move head to point to somewhere else. Where is it going to point to when we delete A? Head is going to point to B. So what we want to do is we want to get rid of head here, and we want to make head now point to B. Okay. When we do that, we don't have anything pointing to A. So what happens to A if nothing points to it? It gets garbage collected. Right? It gets taken away and thrown away. So let's go back to our original situation where we've got head pointing to A. Here's head. It points to A. How do we know what the, the node after head is? What points to that? Head.next. So head.next points to B. So the way that we just delete the first node is all we have to do is set head equal to head dot next. If we do that, it deletes head from pointing to A, moves it over, and now head points to B. Okay. So last time, we also talked about some boundary conditions that we have to worry about when we're operating on data structures. We had five conditions. Do you guys remember what the five conditions were? So the first one is if we have an empty list. Okay, if we have an empty list. The second one is if we have a single element. The third one is when we're working at the beginning of a list. The fourth is when we're working at the end of a list. And the last one is when we're working in the middle. So we have to think about each of those conditions when we're working on our remove methods. So what does a linked list look like if we have an empty list. We have our head pointer. And what does head point to when our list is empty? Null, absolutely. So head points to null. So what's going to happen if our list is empty and we say, let's take head and point it to head.next? We're going to get your guy's new best friend a null pointer exception. If you haven't seen this error yet, I'm sure you will. What this means is that you've got something that's null, in this case head, and you're trying to dereference, in this case, the variable next from it. Okay? You can't do it because head is null. So if our list is empty, we can't set head e 
called to head.next. And at the same time, we've got nothing to return. So in the documentation for the code, in the Java doc, it says that this method will return the first element in the list. But if the list is empty, we'll return null. So for this method, we can just return null. So let's take a look at the code. We're going to have a public E remove first. And the very first thing we want to do is check and see if our list is empty. If our list is empty, we don't need to proceed. We don't need to do anything. We just need to return null. How do we know if our list is empty? It's if head is pointing to null. So if head is equal to null, return null. Our documentation says if the list is empty, we'll return null. Your documentation may say if the list is empty, we're going to throw a no such element exception. OK, assuming the list isn't empty, there's something there. There's a, an element in the first place we want to return. So we need to remember what this data object is, right? And so we just need to store that in a temporary variable that's only going to last for this method. So we're going to have a temporary variable. Just call it temp. You can call it whatever you want. And that's going to be the data object that we're going to return. OK, so we've worried about an empty list. Let's think just for a second about a single element list. So we have a head pointer, and we have a single element list, A. OK. Remember, when we're adding, it really helps us if we have a tail pointer. When we're doing an add last, it really helps us if we have a tail pointer. So if we add a tail pointer to this, our tail pointer also points to the same element, right? If we have one element in the list, our head and our tail both point to the same element. Yeah? So if we have a single element list, when we delete the head pointer by making it point to head.next, which in this case is null. So after we say head equals head.next, now head is null. We also need to remember to update our tail pointer. And what does our tail pointer have to point to? It has to point to null as well. Right? So in the case where we have one element in a list, we need to update both head and tail. This is one of the disadvantages, one of the gotchas about having a tail pointer. Tail pointers give, you, give us constant time complexity to add to the end of the list. But they make it harder because when we have, for example, a one element list, we have to think about updating our tail pointer. So how do we know if we have a single element list and if we have two pointers? How do we know if we have one element? So head.next is equal to null. That's certainly one way we can test. So we could say if head.next is equal to null. We could also say if current size is 1. And there's one other way that we could test. If head is equal to tail. Exactly. OK? We can use any of those three methods. I personally prefer to use if head is equal to tail. Partly because if I have a current size pointer, 
I always forget to update it somewhere. And then you get a null pointer except now I'm writing current size because I'm talking about it. And then you get a null pointer exception if your current size isn't incremented. So if head is equal to tail, we have a single element list. And so we're going to set head equal to tail equal to null. I'm doing two assignments there in one line. I'm setting head equal to null and tail equal to null. But it's perfectly fine to do them in a single line like this. So if head is not equal to tail, then we have multiple elements. And we just need to use our head equal to head dot next. Head is equal to head dot next. We're done with the hard work. We need to affect our current size decrement. And then we just need to return the value of the data object that we were trying to remove, which is stored here as TMP. And we're done.